Ever wondered how a computer virus is made? Create a simple virus so that you can understand how it works, even if you have no experience with writing malicious code. Today, you're gonna see how we do it. Hello and welcome. For those that are new here, my name is Simon and I'm an ethical hacker. And behind the camera lens is the great cameraman Clint. Cameraman Clint, say hello to the people. Hey guys. Today, we are diving into virus creation using C++. If you've never written code in C++, don't worry as you can follow along. We will explore how a basic virus works, create a simple file infector, and understand the role of a payload. But before we get started, a quick disclaimer that this video is strictly for educational purposes only. Writing and experimenting with malware is illegal when done with malicious intent and on systems you do not own. Did you know that viruses follow a specific structure, no matter how complex, and that understanding the structure is key to both creating and defending against malware? Before we begin, let's break down the anatomy of a virus. Understanding the basics is crucial before jumping into the code. A virus is a type of malicious software that attaches itself to host files or a boot sector and can replicate or spread to other files or systems. So what are the basic components of a virus? A virus has three components, the infection mechanism, the trigger, and the payload. We begin with the infection mechanism. This is how the virus spreads. It might infect files, boot sectors, or even propagate itself over a network. The trigger, this is what activates the virus. It could be a specific date, the number of infections, or some other condition. And finally, we have the payload. This is the what it does part, and it could be something as simple as displaying a message or as destructive as deleting files. That's great, but how does a virus virus? Most viruses follow a typical life cycle. That includes the dormant phase, the propagation phase, the trigger phase, and the execution phase. In this video, we will focus on the propagation phase and the execution phase. Now, imagine writing a program that sneaks into files without you even noticing it. Let's build something like that. We'll be using C++ because it allows for low level file manipulation, which is essential for this type of task. You are about to see a simple example of a file infector. This program searches through the current directory for text files and appends a malicious message to them. Let's begin. All right, we begin by importing a few libraries. So to do that, we're gonna use includes. And the first one we're gonna need is the input output stream library. Then we're going to get the F stream library and the include string library. And lastly, we want the file system library because we need to access the file systems. So starting from the top, the IO stream library is the standard input output stream library this f stream is the file stream library to handle file operations the string library is to handle string operations and the file system library is to iterate through files in the directory cool so let's start with our main function so if you guys are wondering what these prompts are it is called codium and it's just an AR copilot basically. You can literally just go download it by typing in Codium VS Code on Google and it should pop up. Sometimes it puts garbage in there that you don't want. Uh, I just want uh, the function to, the main function to work. So that's the main function is return zero, indicates that the program ended successfully. So that's how main functions work in C++. Cool, so now we need a function to infect text files that appends a message to them. So let's call our function void infect files. Files like that. And then I don't want any parameters. Cool. So let's start by defining the virus code that we are going to use. And to do that, we will write a string. And to write strings, you write them like this. So std is the standard library, and then string is a string, and then virus code. Cool, so that's our variable now. And that's gonna be just a message. So 
make it a new line infected by a simple C++ virus. So this is what is going to go into the files and then let's just end that off there like that and then obviously semicolon. So we're defining the virus code that will be appended to the files by writing a string like that, the string that we've just written. And now we're going to iterate through all the files in the current directory. And to do that, we need a for loop. So let me just do that because Codium has got in the right for loop that I want. Okay, cool. And then, so now we are literally, that for loop is, is iterating through all the files in the current directory using the dot as the iterator. Okay, and now we need an if statement to check if the file has a text extension, so .txt extension, so that's just going to be an if entry path, entry.path, and that is a function equals, that is C++ files, we don't want that, we want text files, but close enough, Codium. And then we need a file stream object. So we're just going to call the standard library again, f stream file, let's call it file equal, oh no, we're just defining it now. So let's leave it like that. Cool. And now when you want to open the files in append mode that we're going to infect. So to do that, we would use file.open and it would look like that. So we're going to open the file, entry.path, dot path, cool. And then we're going to make sure that that file is in append mode by specifying that statement there. So that basically opens the file in append mode. And now we need to check if the file is successfully opened. So to do that, we're just going to check if the file is opened and then append the virus code to the file and close the file after writing. Cool. And then we want to make a cool message to show that we infected the file. So just call it a C out there. And then, yeah, that's perfect. So then we, that line that I've just written there out outputs a message to the console indicating that the file was infected. Cool. And then we'll just put an else here. So else, uh, yeah, failed to open the file. That's good enough. So else failed to open the file. So we just output a message to the console if the file couldn't be opened. And uh, that looks all good. And then in the main function, we just need to call the infect function. Let's check if our code is infecting text files. So I'm just in the directory where I have the C++ file and I've just written a simple test.txt file. As you can see, all it has in it is a test file. Let us compile our C++ code and to do that, I'm going to use G++ as my compiler. I'm going to specify 32-bit as the architecture I wanted to write the binary to. Then I'm going to output it as virus just the name that I chose. And then the file is virus.c++. I'm going to run that. And as you can see, we get a executable file here that gets compiled from our C++ file. And now I'm just going to run that file. And as it says, infected test.txt. So let's see what it has infected it with. And you can see it's appended the message infected by a simple C++ virus. So that means our infection method is working. What makes a virus more than just a piece of code? It's the payload. It's what delivers the punch. Let's create one. Our virus is infecting files. So let's talk about the payload. It is what the virus does once it's actually triggered. Let's add a simple payload to our virus. It will append a message to any already infected text files. All right, so to add the payload functionality, we need to define another function. So payload action with a string file name as the parameter. Then we need a string to append to the files. 
So that's going to be the next message that we put in the files when we infect them. And we can do that with just a simple message that this file has been infected. Cool. So that just tells us that infected files have been infected with our payload. Awesome. So then we need to create a file stream object to manage the file and Codium helps us with that. And we need to open the file in append mode so that any data, any new data will be added at the end. And Codium has that uh, code for us as well coming in clutch. And then let's check if the file was open correctly. So just file dot is open. Awesome. So that's a function. So just specify that there. And then we have the curly brackets all set up for us. Append the payload to the file and then we can close it out and we can say that the file was infected and print out the file name to the console. That's what that line of code does. Cool. So that is basically the payload function done. All we need to do now is edit our infect function a little bit by just writing a file name object there so that we can call the payload function in our infect file function. So to do that, we need to convert the file path to a string so we can use it for our payload function. Okay, so to do that, we just need to call that. So string file name, equals entry.path.string. Cool, so that's the the file path and we're converting that to a string. And then we need to check if the file is open, append our virus code, close the file. And then since that's an infected file, we can call our payload action there. Boom. And yeah, guys, so that is how we implement the payload into our virus code. So I'm just going to save that and get to running the new code. Awesome stuff. So let us run our virus again to show you how the payload works. So remember our test file has already been infected by a simple C++ virus. And then I just made a second test to file. That's just a new text file for testing purposes to show you how it works. Cool. So I deleted the binary because uh, I want you need to recompile it because if you just run the old executable, it won't run the new code. So G++ 32-bit, uh, output it as virus and then specify virus.c++ as the file. Awesome stuff. There it is, the binary. So let's run that. Cool. So you see it's infected test.txt and test2.txt. Cool. So let us cut out test.txt and you can see it goes and infects it again and then says the file has been infected and test2, the file has just been infected once and then our payload triggers and says that the file has been infected checking that it's been infected. So that's how our payload works. Congratulations, you have just bought your first virus. But remember, with great power comes great responsibility. Today we covered the basics of virus creation in C++, including how a virus works, we created a file infector, and now we understand how payloads work. Guys, if you want the full virus code, our GitHub will be linked down below in the description. And now, at this stage, you would want someone to download your virus code. This video will show you just how to do that. And guys, if you enjoyed the video today, a like would be greatly appreciated. And don't forget to hit the bell icon so you never miss an upload. And with that, happy hacking and we'll see you in the next one. Peace.